Who has some Nouveau embellishment mousse? I was kind of late to this party. Nuvo Embellishment Mousse has been around in the craft market for what, about a year or so now? Maybe longer? I'm not sure. Something along those lines. And I was a little curious about how I can use it and what it can do. So for all of you who are like me and haven't tried it yet, or maybe you were ahead of the game and bought it when it first came out and are just looking for some new things to try with it, then let's just dig right on in. Oh, and if you are looking to get some, then I've got what I've used today all listed in the description. So just click that show more button, or if you're on mobile, it's the triangle next to the title. This product comes in a wide neck plastic jar, so you can get palette knives in there, sponges in there, all sorts of implements. And when you first get it, you need to take off that silver cover, which doesn't really peel off as I quickly realized. It's really soft. Yep, pretty moussey. But remember that this product is air drying, so do put the lids back on when you're not using it. I only bought three pots and I picked my colors very carefully as you'll see why in a minute. Actually, it was kind of easy for me to pick these colors as they are pretty much my favorites in any materials. What, a hot pink and a teal? It's a bit of a no brainer for me. When you first get the mousse out of the pot, it's kind of crumbly. It's a dimensional product and holds its shape really well. So you can put it on thickly with a palette knife or thinly with a sponge. And as I'm sure many of you already know, it's perfect for using with stencils. You can also use it with water, but from even this small water test, I can tell that you are only really pushing the suspended pigment around and that there isn't really a flow for me. So I think I'd find it not much fun to watercolor with as you'll get brush marks and it will just be a little harder to control. However, these properties can be manipulated for other looks, so it will come in very useful for some effects that we'll take a look at when I do the application tests. This is a mica pigment product, so it has a shiny glint to it and people use it like a gilding wax as well and apply it over textured and embossed surfaces with fingers and sponges and brushes, whatever to just add glitz and color. And it works not only on paper, but on other surfaces too. So have a go with that when you next try it out. And once it's dry, it stays pretty put so you can layer on it as well. But what I really wanted to know is can you color mix it? And this is the main thing that tipped me over the edge and this is why I bought it. I wanted to test them for mixability. So let's give it a whirl. Right, well, yellow and blue should give us a green. When you get craft products, they don't tend to give you any information about the pigment or pigments that make up the color. Sometimes it can be more than one pigment in there, which is why you can get unexpected color mixes when you try mixing products. And I've found this particularly with craft products. So if you have ever found this too, that's why. And it can be pretty frustrating sometimes, but it's all part of the new product learning curve. So I was super interested to see how these fared and it starts off looking a little gray, but as we mix it, it becomes this rather nice olive. Okay, I can live with that. I've also noticed that as you work it, the mousse becomes less crumbly and is nice and smooth, almost liquidy. Now let's try the Indian gold with the pink flambe. See what we get. Ooh, now I really like that. It's a lovely coral color, which is another one of my favorite colors. So thumbs up for that one. Right, so we're now gonna try pink flambe and the Pacific teal together. And I think you're gonna like this one. Ooh, so pretty. So are you all rushing to dig out your embellishment mousse pots from your stash yet? Stay with me because I'm going to try a few techniques now. But perhaps this is a good time to do my plea for likes. Please do like the video if you're enjoying it and finding it useful. And I would love to hear too if you have these products or maybe you have something similar. Let me know and also let me know what you like to use them for. And of course, if you're looking for twice weekly art tips, tutorials and inspiration, then please do subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss my next video. Now this is totally my first time using this product and now that I've tested it for color mixing, I'm going to use those colors that I've made and plus some of the original colors as well and see what else I can do with it. So first up, let's just try a wash. 
You need to work the mousse into the water to dissolve it. And perhaps as I brush it onto the paper, you can see more here about what I mean when I say that using this as a watercolour paint may be a little frustrating. You get those brush marks and it's harder to control, but if you're looking for this type of texture, then it's just great. Now whilst I let that sample dry, let's try the mousse through a stencil with a brush. Then I'm just going to check it out with a sponge. And finally, I'll paste it on with a palette knife and then turn the stencil over to take a stencil print. Okay, all pretty much as expected. Right, so my pink flambe wash is mostly dry and this product does dry quite quickly. And you can see that everything stayed pretty much where I put it. And if I rub the dry areas with my finger, it doesn't come off, which is very handy. And you can add other layers to this as well, no problem. Now I'm just going to set up another wash and this time I'll do a little bit of colour mixing as well. And I let that dry so that I can add a layer of mousse over the top roughly with a palette knife because I want to try a little scraping back on this one. And it's a nice way to add texture or details to a piece. And this product is perfect for doing this. So give this a go next time you're having a play. And you want to make sure that you scrape it back whilst the second layer of mousse is still wet because once it's dry it won't scrape off. So my final test is going to use up the very last bits that are left on my palette. The mousse is starting to dry out and it takes a bit of work to get it back into solution with the water. I think if I'd left it any longer then it wouldn't react to the water at all. Now for this test, I'm going to do a wash, but this time I'll work it a little bit wetter and add more water to the product on the paper surface. In fact, I actually tried this two ways. Uh, the way that you can see here, where I added more water to the paint already on the paper, and another way which I unfortunately didn't film, but where I added a water wash first to the paper and then added the mousse into the wash. But the results were the same for both ways and what you get is this lovely granulation like texture where I'm guessing that the pigment drops out of solution to form this little particulate texture. Now this is probably down to personal taste so you might like the texture or you might not but if you do then have a play and see how you can best use it in your artwork. Once this wash is dry on the paper, it also stays pretty put and the texture doesn't rub off. With a closer look of this texture, and hopefully you can see some of that sparkle, although my camera was having difficulty picking it up, so I hope you're catching some of it. Don't forget that if you want some other ideas on how to get more from your stash, you can watch these videos. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you in a few days' time.